with Brahma Kumaris. Namaskar. Welcome to Awakening with Brahma Kumaris. You're watching Halo Within. Welcome, sister. Om Shanti. Sister, in the last episode, you were speaking about all the yugas, the golden age, silver age, copper, and the golden was the satyug. Yes. And treta. Silver age. Silver was treta, and copper was dwapar. Dwapar. Duality or something. Yes. And then, after the dwapar. No. When we come into the copper, there's a big shift in consciousness. See, from golden age to silver age is a very gradual shift. It's more or less, and that's why from hundred to seventy-five, like that. No, not even hundred to seventy-five. Hundred to ninety. That's why the first half, the entire first half, is called heaven. So we fall down slowly. Yeah, it's very, it's a gradual. very gradual. You, we will not even realize that there is any change because it's still soul conscious. We haven't moved towards body conscious. It's from the copper age that body consciousness starts. Then it's duality. That's why the first half of the cycle complete is heaven. Okay, heaven is not only. Okay, fifty percent is almost heaven. Or not almost. Fifty percent is heaven. It's after fifty percent that gradually body consciousness will start. So actually, even after it starts, it's still nice. You mean golden and silver? I uh, like uh, um, what is that? Uh, Satyug and, and Treta, Treta Yug, yeah. are almost. Uh, Almost similar, and best part is all hundred percent soul conscious, all divine souls, all deities, perfect world, perfect body, perfect nature, relationships, kingdom, everything perfect. No untimely death. Everybody carrying out their entire lifespan till the body is then gradually left. So everything is almost the same. So the complete twenty five hundred years is heaven. Okay, one thousand two hundred fifty is Satyug. Satyug one thousand two fifty is, is Treta Yug. Treta. So twenty five hundred years. Okay, half, half half. So it's we need to understand that for twenty five hundred years we are in heaven, and even after that, it's a very gradual decline towards body consciousness. When we think body conscious and we think vices, we think pain, we think of what we are experiencing today. It will not be that. It will be a gradual. See, when we look at the value systems in society, even today we say, "Oh, fifty years back, hmm. the value systems were we lived in a joint family. Even you know, an entire area or an entire village was like a family. But within the family, the joint family, everybody lived together." Yeah, I still remember people saying, "Oh, she belongs to my village. I can't marry her." She's like a sister to me. If I have to marry, I have to marry outside my village because this village we are all brothers and sisters. And that was not for saying; it was really lived like that. Yeah. People were there for each other. If there was a problem in anybody's house, everybody would unite to help them. How long back was this? Not very. Fifty years. We've even we've seen a shift in the value system from when we were children to what we are today. We have lived in joint families, and today we are seeing a society when majority would prefer nuclear family, and we're shifting to a society where even children want to move away and live separately. We're shifting to a society where people say we don't feel like getting married; we just want to live alone. Yes,、yeah, some people don't even want to have children, even if you're married. Yes. So this has happened in last twenty years. Yeah. Fifty years back, we were. All huge, twenty people living together in nice houses, big houses. Today we're living in small flats. So everything, resources, have reduced per person. The amount of resources that we have is reduced. Population has increased. Such a big shift in fifty years. What would have it been hundred years back, thousand years back, two thousand years back? This we so we understand that twenty five hundred years is heaven. Then is copper age. Copper Age is another twelve fifty, and then is the Iron Age, which we're living in now, Kaliyug. That's another twelve fifty. So twenty five hundred years Satyug and Treta Yug, and twenty five hundred years Copper Age, Dwapar Yug and Kaliyug. So today it is so much of pain, but not two thousand years back. Two thousand years back, it must still have been very beautiful. A lot of difference between gold and 
<laughs> iron, the Gold price and difference. Iron. Yes, definitely. So when we shift from silver age to copper age, that's when body consciousness creeps in, vices begin. See, all the vices will stem only from body consciousness. I am a body, so then there is lust. I am a body, so I need to acquire things, so greed. I am a body, I will die, I will have to leave everybody, attachment. I am a body, if I don't get so much, I will be angry. All these vices come with body consciousness. Soul consciousness, all vices disappear and original qualities are used again. So when these vices started creeping in, pain started being experienced, people started having animosity, little hurt, little hatred. Society started little disintegrating, not compared to what it is today. It was hardly anything, but compared to heaven, it was a disintegration. There was very little disharmony, but compared to a perfect world, that disharmony seemed like what is happening to all of us. It's like a family where everyone was united and suddenly that family is seeing that we are having little fights. Today we have separated. We are all living in separate houses. Today many of us don't even know who the neighbor is, who's staying, what is happening in their house. If someone comes to know something is happening, we say better not to interfere in other people's lives. The place I live in, state of Maharashtra, especially Mumbai, people find out a dead body after, you know, Yes. It starts thinking because Absolutely. nobody knows. Absolutely. There are people who would say, oh, we are happy when that person is in pain. You know, in Hindi it said, unke dukh mein hume sukh lagta hai. So where, where have we shifted? We have shifted from, we used to feel bad if somebody was in pain. Then we reached a stage, we became indifferent to other people's pain. We said, okay, they have a pain, they have problem, that's their problem. And we've reached a stage today where it gives us some kind of pleasure if other people are in pain? Not only pleasure, but, but you know, it's so strange that uh, people don't know that somebody's murdered next door. So, shifted from the whole village living as one family to not knowing what's happening in my next neighbor's door. house. Sometimes not even knowing what's happening in my brother's house or child's house or my parents' house. Not knowing. because Living everything. in the same house, we don't know when the child has come home, when is he going, yes. when is, where is anybody gone. Mm. And I met a family and uh, there was this young couple and they said, oh, we watch Awakening every evening at 7.10. I said, good. And then they said, you know what happened one evening? We just realized we were watching Awakening in our bedroom. The elder brother was watching with his wife in his bedroom and our in-laws were watching in their bedroom and all these days we didn't know that we were all watching the same program at seven o'clock in the evening. <laughs> Living in the same I house. Love it. Living in the same house. So this is how we are disintegrating. But today we are accepting it. And we yeah, say, if okay, you ask them the question, this question, they'll say at least we're living in the same, same house. under the same roof. Yeah, absolutely. As long as we're still cooking in the same kitchen, it's a very big thing in today's time, they will say. Yeah. But at the beginning of Copper Age, when this just crept in, it came as a big shock to people. Suddenly, a perfect family had started having problems. You know, it was like that. Somebody who never had problems, never ever had problems, had started having problems. Somebody could actually cheat another one. It was like you cheated your brother. You know, it was, it, it, that is how everyone saw that society was disintegrating. Now we need help. The first time I heard somebody divorced his wife, you know, it was a shock. I said, oh, there's something called divorce. Something like this happened? Because we were living with the belief, once married, you will always be there together. And how old is that? 50 years back. So 2500 years back, it was still a perfect world. So when this little disintegration started, disharmony began, we experienced first signs of pain we started looking for help. We said, we need help. Where's the father? And we started looking for God because we remembered again that remembrance was there. He's the one who loves unconditionally, protects, blesses, gives us all the powers. And we started building our first temples. And like we saw last time, the first temples were of Shiv, Jyoti, Ling, symbol of point of light. Those were our first temples first time calling out to him. 
Now, when we must have built the first temples, we were very clear, this is a symbol of God. This is not God. This is a symbol of the point of light. And when I sit and meditate or concentrate or pray over there near that symbol, I'm not connecting to that symbol. I'm connecting to a source of power of whom I have made this symbol there. This badge you're wearing? Hmm? A symbol of Brahma Kumari. Right. Symbol. But th th that, that badge is not Brahma Kumari. Absolutely. It's just a symbolic representation of the truth. Now, gradually, as the problems started increasing and pain started increasing, very, very special, pure souls came onto this earth according to their time and according to their role to take care of society to protect society. Abraham, the first prophet, who came and gave again the message that God is light. And he said Jehovah. India, it was first said Shiva. He said Jehovah, which was more or less very similar. Now these, we need to see, this is a soul coming from the soul world. Pure, pure, powerful, and he's just coming from where the father is. And here he's coming to people who've moved away from the father since a very long time. So they don't remember too much about the father. So this brother comes here and gives them the message of, have you forgotten that we are all brothers? And everyone starts talking about unity. Mm -hmm. One father and unity, brotherhood of mankind, brotherhood of humanity under one father. So he started giving a message of the moral and the right way of living. Hmm. How old was this? 500 years before Christ. Abraham, the prophet, came on the planet 500 years before Christ. What are we today? We are about a little more than 2000 years after Christ. So 500 years before that becomes almost 2500 years from today, which means the beginning of copper age. That was the beginning of corporate. Okay. Another place, Shankaracharya. Because originally in heaven, in Satyug and Treta Yug, we were all pure souls. There was no concept of lust. It was purity. As we came into the corporate, Dwapar. Dwapar, body consciousness, so lust started creeping in. Now, this pure soul wanted to give the message of purity that what has happened to us? We were all pure. Where are we all moving away from our original purity? So he gave the concept of renunciation. Sannyas is where it started, that we need to live pure lives, pure physically also, and pure mentally also. And Shankaracharya set in the method of sannyas, that move away. But because they couldn't explain how you can do do it being with people, they said, move away from your home, go away, go into the jungle, go into the mountains and practice purity. So somebody was teaching morals, somebody was teaching values, somebody was teaching about purity. They were all teaching that which we had just, just given up. It's like we are healthy, we just started falling ill and there are souls who want to take us back to our original health, so they start teaching us this. Then came Jesus Christ, which is a little more than 2000 years from now. Again, finger up there, gave only one message. God is light and he gave the message of forgiveness and love. And all these prophets, they had those values in their personal life. You know, they were living role models for people then. And very important for us, we need to understand that those souls who were living with them at that time in Copper Age were very clear about this. They were not talking religion. They were very clear that here has come this pure soul and he's giving us the message of God. It was not religion being established then. Then. They were just, somebody came to guide us. Somebody came to heal us. Somebody came to take care of us. So Jesus Christ then came in. Then one after the other, then Gautam Buddha. 
Now, Gautam Buddh came in the area of India where different concepts of God had started because after we built temples in the remembrance of Shiva and we did Shiva Jyoti Linga, when the body consciousness increased, we couldn't concentrate on the Jyoti Linga. We mm. said, because I'm a body, God also must be some, because my father also must be some body. human form. Mm. So the next temples that we started building were of the deities. First we built of Shiv Jyoti Ling. After that we started building temples of Sri Radhe, Krishna, Lakshmi, Nara and Ram, Sita and of course so many, so many, so many more after that. Now we understand who were those deities. Those deities were pure souls who had just, just crossed here, golden and silver age. And here when I come into copper age, 100 years or 200 years later, I don't see that purity in myself. So I built statues or monuments or photographs of our forefathers, deities, and we started worshipping them. Now, if somebody worshipped Sri Krishna, somebody worshipped Sri Ram, somebody worshipped Sri Hanuman, those also started becoming like sects. I worship this one, separate sect. I worship this one. And we started again disintegrating. At that time, Gautam Buddha came and said, keep aside the concept of God. Let's talk about the right way of living. So that he wanted people to move away from this topic which was causing disintegrity in them. He did not say there's no God. You know, sometimes today we say Buddhism doesn't believe in God, but that's not the truth. It's just that his focus was, finally, we have to live right lives. And so he gave us the eightfold path of living, right action, right speech, right way of living. Mahavir. Another, again, again talked about incorporeal. So one after the other, what were all these prophets doing? Trying to remind you. Of God. And trying to tell you, connect to Him. Because if you connect to Him, you'll remain grounded, stable. connected, stable. You will not scatter like this. You will remain powerful if you're connected to the powerhouse. You're all depleting like this, disintegrating like this. So they all came for that. They were all coming in different parts of the world 500 years before or later. Later, as time passed, these teachings that were given gradually became into institutions and gradually into religion. You know, finally, then you have structures and systems and followers. Initially, there was nothing like that. Nothing. And then we came to a point that in the name of religion, we just became separate from each other because this is who I believe, this is what you believe. Now, very, very important thing that happened in the Copper Age was also the scriptures. All our scriptures that we are studying today were all written in the Copper Age. And now we understand that what we are reading today was written probably 2,000 years before. And like we saw earlier, something written before, according to society at that time, according to the prevailing condition of society at that time, according to the state of mind at that time of the one who was writing it, and the message which was applicable that time. The essence was very true, but now after 2,000 years, the way we perceive it has probably changed a little bit. When we started writing these scriptures, now we have to see why the scriptures were being written. The scriptures were being written again for protection of society at that time, to give a social message. The social message was of unity, of loyalty, of obedience, of honesty. This was the message which had to be given to the souls at that time who had just begun using other ways of living. Let's look at it today. Today, if you have to give a social message, whether it's to do with global warming, whether it's to do with environmental protection, whether it's to do with using green, whether it's to do with AIDS, whether it's to do with tourism of the country, when you have to give a social message mm. to people, how is it done today, even today? How do we give a social message to people? Through television, newspapers. Right. Through media, 
So which means we write something. Either we write a book, we write an article. Today we have electronic media, so we have TV, we have movies. How do we give the social message? We make a little film. Hmm. It could be a one-minute film, it could be a 30-minute film. It's a film. When we make the film, we create a little story. How is a message? Like even as when we were children, we had the Panchatantra stories, the Jakarta stories. We wanted to teach children about more. Yeah, we did plays uh, in small uh, towns, uh, how bad is plastic, you know, on Perfect. the street. Right. Street, so street plays. plays. Street plays. Now, street plays would have a little story. Mm. Because if we give message as theory, don't do this, do this, this is bad, this is good, people don't remember it. For somebody to give a message in a very effective manner, if it is given in the form of a story, story is never forgotten. And the story also gives the message. So you take a story, take the message, create a story around that message so that the people will remember the story and thereby the message. Now, if we want to create a little story and give the message, and then even today, we use a celebrity to endorse that message. Right? Because we know if this person says it, people will listen to it. When you have somebody endorsing that message or promoting that message, we will take care that that person also believes in that message. Only then it will have its credibility. If someone's talking about vegetarianism and somebody is promoting about animal welfare and animal protection, then it won't be a person who's consuming it himself or herself. It will be a person who lives that in his life. Then we say, this person can endorse this message. So the method is very simple. Make a story, integrate the message, and have characters in that story who stand for that message, who stand for that value system. Today, we very clear, we understand that this is a story. And this character believes in that message. But the story that that character is playing there, it's not that character's life. It's He's just playing a role in that story. Simple. Once that character moves out of that story, he has its own life. That is different. Now, what happened in Dwapar Yoga? We had to give messages. We had to give message of how an obedient son should be, how an obedient brother should be, how a loyal wife should be. All value systems. All value system, which had just started crumbling. Disintegrated. Just started crumbling. So, we wrote very powerful messages so that we could convey that complete system of way of living. And every story had one message, the victory of truth over evil. evil. Every, every message says, finally, who wins? Truth wins. Honesty wins, value system win, because that is what we were trying to teach. That is what was the pure intention of the ones who wrote all the scriptures. While writing that story, who would be the characters who would endorse that story? The biggest star. The biggest star. Who were the biggest stars who lived those value systems? Who lived those value systems, those deities who were in Satyog? We used to hero worship them. Absolutely. Because whether it's Sri Krishna, Sri Ram, they lived those values because they were in the golden and the silver age. Those souls were pure souls. They lived those values. So we came into Copper Age. We wrote a story, took the figure from here, which stood for those value systems. So it was easy to relate. Oh, yes, loyalty is this. Honesty is this. And we were getting the message. But... To, to prove that truth wins over evil, we had to create some more characters. Because how will I show evil? If today you have to draw a painting of showing anger fails, peace wins over anger. Draw this as a picture. How will you draw? Peace wins over anger. Honesty wins over lies. Draw this as a painting. A very peaceful uh, figure mm -hmm. is standing upon evil. Evil. Now, uh, draw evil. Okay, I understood this peaceful figure. And you have to show, because that picture is not going to speak. So, I have to give the complete message in the picture. Peace wins over evil. Yeah, evil so, maybe with 
long teeth and you know with big eyes and the children get scared with that so kind ugly. of a picture ugly ugly absolutely ugly now this ugly figure that you draw is not a living entity it's my imagination it's not an imagination it's a pictorial representation okay how like today if we want to show slide shows we do no like we want to say cigarette smoking is dangerous so what do we draw yeah. if we want to show okay 440 volts don't touch there so what do we draw yes yeah. yeah, we so show death yeah so we show one skull and those two bones like this this is a pictorial representation of danger what will be a pictorial representation of vices i want to show lust i want to show greed i want to show anger i want to show hatred and then i want to show how love wins over this maybe uh, intoxicated men with yes. love a sword in one hand and right. trying to kill somebody and True. looking ugly fat and absolutely uh, not this good looking it. at all this is it these were the devil that we created the devil which was not a living entity we need to understand this today we were talking about victory over the devil in inside us victory over our own vices but we had to represent it we had to teach it so how will we draw it so we drew statues we did paintings and in all of them what did we show divine pure peaceful deities and victory over evil evil message conveyed message conveyed even the devis that we show today no durga no devi every devi is standing or sitting and under her feet you have some ugly black character that doesn't mean she killed somebody and was standing on it it just means she killed the devil inside it's her it's good or good over evil good over evil so good over evil was being represented in different forms physically pictorially stories poetry painting this is how it started in dwapar yuga to give us a message this is how you have to be you will always win every poem every story said you will always win if you use your value system and that's how they were started initially the intention was that that's why when we write books we say adapted from so and so absolutely inspired by so and so character True. inspired by mahatma gandhi right. inspired by absolutely absolutely mm, thank you so much sister it's so inspiring let's uh, continue this in the next episode sure. immediately definitely thank you so much om shanti om shanti om shanti